Right, everyone, uh, I've been having a think about some things to do and uh, I think, to be honest, I've decided to create, uh, let's call it a weekly rant, uh, some things that are on my mind, happening in the industry, things that I've seen, uh, yeah, just a general natter and, and blow some steam off about a few things, really. And today's topic is one that really does get under my skin a lot. Uh, and that is one word, tatigoi. Now, this word, it's a, it's a hugely, hugely, hugely complex subject uh, and one that, yeah, can create uh, hours and hours and hours of topic in truth. But the particular rant today is about uh, one, one point, really, and that's this word being used as a sales tactic to try and you know, make people believe that they're buying something more special than what they are actually buying when in reality, uh, you know, you're not buying a tatigoi at all. It's just a word that's been stuck in a particular, in front of a fish for whatever reason to try and mislead or misguide people. So uh, I'm just going to spend a little bit of time uh, and, and, you know, come up with a few myth busters really and, and try and educate you more about what that actually word means in the bigger picture uh, of koi. So this word, uh, tatigoi, let me try and uh, just summarize what it actually means uh, in general. In Japan, breeders basically have two types of fish uh, when we're walking into a fish house. There would be tatigoi, uh, which is basically the fish they've selected and deemed to be the ones that they want to keep and grow for another season. So at that moment, you could say that's their best fish. Uh, and certainly the ones that want to invest, you know, the best ponds into and the most amount of time into, uh, hoping that they grow in value uh, in future. Uh, certainly, these are not fish that are on general sale uh, and it can be very hard to obtain them. It's very frustrating when we walk into these fish houses. Uh, generally, the, the fish in there just look absolutely incredible. They'll, they'll always stand out. Some breeders go to great efforts to actually hide them out of the way uh, which is quite normal, uh, but yeah, generally these these fish houses, uh, the tatigoi, they're just not they're not for sale. If they are for sale, or you know, there's something in there you really want to get hold of and try and you know grow it on yourself uh, or grow it in Japan, it's a long-winded ne negotiation process uh, to get the breeder to part with it. The price you're going to pay is is normally you know pretty astronomical because uh, we are. Uh, the breeder's looking at that fish and, and thinking what it could be worth to him in, in another year's time uh, or even two years time and that's likely the price that you're going to pay not not the price for it now so it's, it's not a straightforward process buying genuine real tatigoi uh, doesn't happen very often no matter who you are uh, the other type of fish just, just for reference uh, that you have in the fish houses are the tatishta and what these are is, is all the other stuff that's on, on general sale. Uh, it's there and available. There's varying different levels of tatishta, that's quite normal. You'll have from you know the, the run of the mill uh, general grade fish up to very high level fish, which could you know possibly have been tatigoi. Uh, but the fact is, you know, they aren't, and that's why the breeders selling them. Uh, some interesting uh, thoughts you know, on what tatigoi actually means and what it means to, to us. Yes, you know, ultimately we're saying, you know, that particular breeders, these are the best fish at that moment in time, in his opinion. Now, some breeders, you know, it's very limited due to space, you know, the numbers they're gonna keep uh, as tatigoi. Uh, and yeah, I mean, ultimately what a tatigoi is one season, the following season is, you know, if it's toe side, the following season is this eye. It's just as you know likely that fish is now no longer going to be deemed tatigoi and just you know another general Nisai tatishtar on on sale. So it's it's very fluid. Uh, my honest opinion, the word you know for for the consumer for me for even if it's it's just a load of bollocks. Uh, it's a sales tactic. When you see it used, is it really relevant to the fish that you buy in? No. Uh, because 
it's very subjective. You know, one breeder's tatigoy, a lower level breeder, his tatigoy, his, his best fish, you know, could be of a lower grade than the worst fish available at a big farm, uh, which would be, you know, Tachista. So at the likes of Dainichi, their, their general fish that are on sale could possibly be far better than the tatigoy of another breeder. So, you know, what is it that you're, you're really buying? You should never base it around that word. It should just be based on, on the quality of the fish that you're, you're looking at at that moment in time. I think uh, another very big misconception uh, around this word is when it's very often that you see young fish that still need to develop. Uh, it, that could mean that, you know, there's gonna be some, some change in the color to come. It could need some sumi to come out in, in, a, in a show or a sankey, for example. What that doesn't mean is that that fish is tatigoy just because it has some colour to develop. That's, you know, the case with most fish, whether it's good, bad, ugly, whatever it is, there's probably going to be some change uh, of some description. So I have seen that, you know, in the past where you've got a show, for example, that's got very little sumi and someone's called that tatigoy because that colour just needs to develop. That is not the case. Uh, that is just a fish that needs to progress and needs some time. Uh, it's not a genuine tatigoy. Like I've just said before, you know, the levels of fish can vary significantly and most have got uh, work and, and, you know, colour to develop. So uh, that could be, you know, a lack of education for some people, uh, but it could just be, again, that it's being used as a ploy to think you're buying something, uh, you know, it's more special than it than it really is. I think another huge uh, thing to understand with tatigoy again is just is just actually the process of these fish. I've seen it happen loads of times where you, you've got a customer or I've got a customer with me, and you know you see these ponds. And don't get me wrong, it's it's easy to completely lose yourself in in how amazing uh, these fish and, and the potential is what grabs a lot of people. It's it's ultimately. You know, with true tatigoy, it's, it's buying the dream. Uh, it's a high level fish that, that's, you know, got some potential for the future. The reality of that potential, however, is is pretty damning when you consider the kind of numbers. You know, if we were to take a pond of a hundred uh, tosai tatigoy from a breeder, for example, that he's keeping, at that moment in time of them being released into the mud pond, yes, they are his tatigoy. Again, subjective. Uh, but to him there is his best fish uh, over the summer months he's going to grow them he's going to raise them do his best to uh, you know get the most out of them now come the autumn harvest this is when it really gets interesting because out of those hundred fish all of a sudden which were tatigoy only you know five to six months prior all of a sudden probably 90 percent of those fish 80 to 90 percent at least are going to then be de deemed fish that go on general sale, therefore Tatishta. And yes, prices will vary, qualities will be vary. There'll be some truly terrible fish uh, out of them, fish that have lost their colour completely. And to think that was a Tatigoy six months ago, uh, it pretty much shows you it's a, it's a dangerous dream to chase and a dangerous word to chase. Uh, you'll have pretty low level fish that are sold off relatively inexpensively then obviously like the medium grade bulking it up and then yes there will be some you know high level fish which are nice and then that small percentage which are left which will still remain as tatigoy possibly for that breeder on for another year by which time the process will just repeat uh, when yeah you know that out of them 100 maybe 10 uh, are kept on to grow to Sansai and then at that point of them Sansai you're probably going to be working on the same numbers again you know it's going to be probably two or three of those fish which might make it on to, to grow for another year and in the reality is again the other ones will just be uh, fish that, that go on sale so I, I hope that you know this gives you more of an idea of why the word is uh, a dangerous one really I think is, is the best word for it like I say, I would not, I used to do it in the past, I'll openly admit, you know, I'd be in there and you'd see these ponds full of fish and you'd do, you know, as a passionate koi enthusiast, you'd just lose your mind a little bit. 
but the reality is after years and years of watching watching these these you know fish progress the numbers are, are so small especially when you're dealing with uh tosai that is a bigger problem because the numbers and the risk like i say you know that 100 fish is is 80 to 90 percent of it just being you know not quite what they were uh six months earlier with Nisai, it's a little bit of a different game. Nisai are much, uh, much safer, much more predictable because you, you've already had the big sort of uh, transformation uh, from one to two years. Uh, but yeah, Nisai, Tatigoi, the, the genuine things, the fish with potential, uh, cost them much easier to see. The, the gender is, is much more accurate to identify. These things are gonna cost a lot of money at a decent koi breeders. Uh, even an average breeder, you know, as each year passes, if that level and quality is still there, the, the price is just going to get higher and higher. Uh, but ultimately, there is a lot less risk. And yeah, true Tatigoi at Nisai and Sanzai uh, are quite hard to uh, get your hands on. Uh, if you can, you're very lucky. But on that topic, ultimately still what you are buying is a very, very, very high level fish. The tatigoi part of it isn't really all that relevant. It's just the quality of the fish that you've been able to access and get your hands on, uh, which is a tricky thing. It's all part of the game in Japan, to be honest with you. Breeders like to hide them. Uh, get Sometimes that they're there just to look at and it's just like dangling a carrot. It's, it's horrendous at times and you see that quality and you know it's what you want. Uh, but yeah, it's got to align with the with the breeder's vision. Uh, so now really just to come back to uh, the point of, of this rant, uh, and it's that, you know, recently I've been flicking through my phone, um, you know, fish crop up, uh, I've followed people, it's, it's new fish that are for sale, uh, and I'm seeing, you know, fish that have, maybe call it even 400 pound, you know, to a thousand pound just over, marked as Tatigoi. Now, uh, it's, just, it's just a load of rubbish. Uh, I cannot for one minute accept that, you know, at that kind of price level, uh, given everything involved, that, you know, they would be uh, a breeder's genuine tatigoi in the slightest, and I just find it very frustrating. Uh, it's very misleading for, for you guys, for anybody looking at that potential purchase, if they are paying attention to it. Uh, my advice and what I hope from this video is that you take away uh, you know, to ignore the word, if you see it, just blank it, look at the fish in front of you, look at the qualities of the fish more importantly, uh, and yeah, forget, forget the word. Even, you know, for those of you who are lucky enough to visit Japan and do all that, admire these fish, certainly when you're, you're looking at Tosai, admire them, but my advice would be to, uh, you know, unless, unless you're playing at low level sums uh, financially, avoid the Tosai uh, Tatigoi dream and uh, focus more on, on buying better quality Nisai where the future is, is sort of more clearly uh, mapped out and there's a lot less risk involved. So that's the end of my rant for today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching uh, and not got too bored of me rumbling on. So uh, yeah, if you would like to uh, see my future videos, please subscribe, you'll get a notification then when anything's uploaded. Plenty going on in my head, plenty to talk about, uh, and hopefully I'll have another video up again soon.